Greetings, friends and shoppos. It's Monday, January 9th. Uh, it's a travel day for one uh, Matt Christman, but uh, fear not, both myself and Felix are here. But joining us for your edification is our good friends, Hessa and Ben from Seeking Derangements, back again. Hessa, hello, Ben, hello. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Hello. Happy New Year. Thanks for guys. having How's us. Going? It's uh, always great to have you here. Um, we've got the, it's, been a, it's been a busy weekend. We've got some big news stories happening over the weekend. So uh, just to kick it off, um, let's begin with uh, there's a new date in January uh, that will now live in infamy. That's right. January 8th in Brazil will now go down in history as somehow an even lamer coup attempt than the one we had in America. Mm -hmm. So uh, rule number one, rule number one here, uh, just just for folks paying attention at home. If you are attempting to overthrow the government of your country on behalf of a recently defeated political leader, you have to make sure that said political leader is in the country at the time that you do. (laughs) Well, yeah. okay. so that was a strange feature about all this right was that um bolsonaro and his most trusted like non-son lieutenants all went to (laughs) orlando and they're like all right let's give ourselves like five days to plan this five days you know we'll sit in the writer's room we'll get some five hour energies we'll we'll bang this out i got i have dark web vivans We're, we're, we're gonna get to the bottom of this thing and after five days uh what they got was we're gonna send i'd say about 800 people to congress when no one's there and they're gonna beat the shit out of a police horse until it dies <laughs> and then get arrested by the military Wait, did, did, like, did, they, did they kill a horse they did kill a horse yeah Bolsonaro su- supporters saw a brazilian his uh, vengeance against horse. animals yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's just i mean i would say they got about five times closer on January 6th. Like, at least they were in the building on January yeah. 6th. No one was <laughs> there. No one was there. It was like, it was like the, the robbery from Bad Santa. It's like... If um, it was a coup attempt. The part in Airplane where they're all lining up to slap that woman, except they're all... It's like an 800-person line lining up to hit a horse with a bat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when the, when the military got there... After they had, like, you know, broken... First of all, I'm sorry. Apologies to Brazil. Their congressional building looks like a fucking Macy's. After they broke (laughs) the revolving door of the Macy's Congress and killed the horse, the military shows up and they start cheering because they're like, oh, this must mean that they've decided to break for us. This is like our our red October moment. (laughs) And they instantly get arrested. Instantly. (laughs) Well... I mean, I thought that it was interesting because, you know, Brazil obviously is a country that's experienced the military dictatorship and coup. So, like, you know, they, they've, they've had the military intervene in their democratic process before. But once again, the strong men created good times. The good times create coup plotters that are just waiting for the military to step in and do something. Sorry, you got to do some of the work yourself. Well, yeah, I mean, OK, so, yeah, they, they had a coup very recently, you know, the coup that put to mayor and then by extension Bolsonaro in power. But it's like, okay, well, you see why they sent a Washington trained judge to put this all in motion. Why it wasn't just you planning it that time. Mm -hmm. I'll be Uh, honest. I didn't know about any of this until researching before the episode. (laughs) I I think that those people, everything they did was right. I agree with them. (laughs) (laughs) That horse was a menace. (laughs) Yeah, that horse horse (laughs) deserved it. That horse was a menace. I think this might have actually been a targeted assassination of the horse disguised as a coup attempt. If this was just like they wanted to kill this one police horse, (laughs) then it would be like, "Mm, all right, let's hear him out. I don't know. No one died. No one died, though. No one like tased himself in the nuts or accidentally like shot someone there. No. Uh, So it's not quite as funny as January 6th, but, you know, uh, uh, I just have to pass this along from Matt. Um, he said, how to tell January 6th from January 8th. January 6th attendees have names like Grunch Bunions. January 8th attendees have names like Hercules Carvalho. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> then he says, uh, we're, oh, January 6th, Wurng Angstrom takes a dump in the Senate cloakroom. January 8th, Lincoln Rockwell da Gama takes a dump in Palicio Justicio. 
<laughs> I was thrilled to know, I was thrilled to find out, though, that Brazil has their own grapers and they have yes. their own QAnon yes. shaman. And I really liked following the Brazilian grapers because one of them uh, shared a photo of what... Uh, of a dildo in a uh, in like a shoulder bag, and said this was found in the office of like a Brazilian Supreme Court judge, a sodomite toy. <laughs> Post- and then the well, the military, then the military, uh, you know, covered it up. But I love you know, the so- idea. I love the idea of being like so gay that you you can't even like not take your dildo to work. <laughs> it's like oh, I can't go eight hours without getting fucked in the ass. Switching dildos at work, <laughs> like you're switching shirts. I love the. I love, like, Brazil is, like, simultaneously, like, a thousand years in the future and a thousand years in the past because, like, yes. they say things like a sodomite toy and then <laughs> their, like, club music is, like, designed to be listened to while you're doing a drug called, like, Kooky Kooky that is just, like, <laughs> mainlining, like, liquid mercury from thermometers <laughs> into your bloodstream. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Okay, so yeah, half the people are named after Jefferson Davis. They, you know, have names like Jefferson Davis, Pereira, uh, Mercedes, as Matt alluded to. <laughs> but then they also made Baby Rexa or Hexa. You know, it's a country <laughs> that changed Albanian. Multiple. No, 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 no. There are just so many Albanian pop stars, pop stars that look like her that you got confused. She is an yeah. actual, <laughs> honest to God, Brazilian. I thought she was a part okay. Of the Albanian mafia as well. That actually explains a lot about her. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. She was uh, the David Guetta blue song. She's the vocals on that. I'm, I'm obsessed with that song. It's yeah, so that, funny. That, that's the song that the Brazilian patriots, the Groypers, were standing up and singing <laughs> at Brazilian January 6th. It's maybe the most improvised sounding song I've ever heard in my life. And it somehow <laughs> beats out the song it's based on which is the previous most improvised sounding song of all time they beat it so brazil um they they had their shot to do january 6 and it was yeah like i said somehow even lamer than our coup attempt uh there's something like 400 people have already been arrested and they're just like sort of sitting in a big warehouse right now uh waiting to have charges filed against them but once again it's like yeah, you, you can you can hope that your actions inspire the military. Look, we're all hoping the military takes over this country. I know I am. But like you've gotta you can't just you can't just demand that they do it for you. You know, you gotta you gotta have just a little bit of skin in the game. I don't know. You gotta I gotta gotta inspire the people, you know, and you can't just inspire them with a ripoff of our January six, which also failed. So mm-hmm. you know, Brazil, step your game up, please. It's so funny that they were like two days later. That's what was missing from January sixth. <laughs> it was supposed to be on if it was on January eighth. It would have succeeded. Well, they've had they had two years to plan this thing based on the failures of January six, and it doesn't seem like they really <laughs> did their homework here. Well, no uh, one ta- I, no one tased themselves. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they read the manuals for all the tasers <laughs> yeah. before they went in. But like yeah, even I, even even more than that, it's like well, this is a country that did have like a military dictatorship like not that long ago. Like like you you you'd think that they would remember how to. I don't know, change the oil, do something. But literally, they just, yeah, they took the American plan of uh, just go, go there and run around and they'll have to take you to McDonald's. I'm like <laughs> picturing like cross cuts of the, this coup attempt um, and it cutting back to Bolsonaro like looking at bananas at, at like <laughs> at a Publix well uh, like everybody wants to rule the world plays on this <laughs> <laughs> there's a room where the doctors will find you Jair it's called the hospital check it out um, no but yeah no he's getting he is in the his, hospital though <laughs> yeah no he's at the hospital right now he's getting updates on his phone about how his supporters are like Jair we're here from you. The country is ours. It will never be taken from us. And he's like, sorry, be right back. I have shingles covering 99% of my body. <laughs> he's so funny. He's like the Jamila Jamil of the <laughs> He's so cool. I saw um, someone sent me a picture the other, like um, earlier today, actually, of this, just like this poor random woman who looks kind of like Bolsonaro in a bad way at this <laughs> restaurant in Florida. And they were like, look at, oh my God, he has to disguise himself. Well, yeah, I was going to say, like, there's no way they can extradite him because there are too many old people in Florida who look like beanbags with random diseases. <laughs> like, there's no way they're going to be able to find him. 
it's like the mirror scene from Enter the Dragon when they try to catch him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all, right, all right, guys, this should, this should be easy. We're going into South Florida. We're looking for a guy with sort of like, uh, I don't know, distressed leather like skin and uh, 90% droopy dog jowls. Droopy, droopy dog jowls. And it's almost like he has a camouflage of liver spots. It should not be too hard. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're putting out a bolo for someone whose face is uh, sort of frozen in some sort of death rictus smirk <laughs> and what has, uh, currently has breathing tubes in his face at all times. And then it's also, yeah. for some reason, uh, his hand is also frozen rigor mortis style and a thumbs up. <laughs> look, for yeah. a man, look for a man grinning and giving a thumbs up very close to death. Yeah, we're, Dougie we're looking. Jones. He's just like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> literally. We're looking for du- we're looking for du- we're looking for Dougie Jones who has a tube connecting his colon to a super soak. <laughs> Should not be too hard to find. We're gonna get him. <laughs> it's like that's definitely it's. Literally nine guys there right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, poor showing from Bolsonaro supporters. I mean, why the fuck would he go back to Brazil now after 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 some weak shit like yeah. that? But Felix, I will disagree with you for a second here. Just to go back to what you said about the uh, capital of Brazil and Brasilia, I think their capital is very cool looking. I think it's very cool and modern, and I wish we had a, a Macy's looking capital in this country. <laughs> I think it, l- it looks like the Grove. <laughs> that's why it's cool. That's why it's cool. That's why I like it. I it's I don't know. It's not very based. I would. I I don't know if you saw this, but um, you know how Victor Orban is like just does every like internet conservative thing. He's doing a thing now where he's like uh re he's like decucking the architecture of Hungary and making it classical again. I wanted Bol- Bolsonaro didn't even do that. Yeah, he's and making like, it harder for the politicians there to jump out of the windows where 12 guy <laughs> orgies are happening. <laughs> <laughs> Getting yeah, bars all that. over the windows. <laughs> that guy, oh, that, man, that guy was great. If there had only been some nice wrought iron on those windows, yeah. he could have uh, he could have just, you know, he should have been stayed there and fucked and sucked to his, his heart. Con- yeah, his he turned into content. jail. It's, yeah. I literally, <laughs> in my mind's eye, picturing this coup, it's all like waxed eyebrow jacked tanned brazilian yeah. gay hustlers no i know i was <laughs> thinking the same thing too because i had no clue i saw like two videos and i was like my only reference point for brazilian culture are like really buff gay guys with like blonde facial hair <laughs> like yeah. blonde yeah. facial hair and i'm like i guess they're going crazy at the capital right now <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was the BB Rexa concert, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, of course. Some, yeah, but, yeah you know, some some Brazilians are like marvels of bodybuilding and pharmaceuticals, and some yeah. just like I mean, we've made the point several times that they're just you know it's America with Portuguese instead of English soup stock, and they just <laughs> you know they look like dumpy Americans, but maybe like a shade tanner. Mm-hmm. I just once again, I'm I'm loving the idea of uh, Bolsonaro in the Orlando-based home of an MMA fighter sleeping in his minions-themed bedroom, watching his <laughs> yeah. watching his country go. I mean, it's just he can, he can only he can only watch in mute horror. Uh, the minions from room. from his minions-themed race car bed. Okay, I kind of do want to ask Felix, who it seemed like on the last episode you knew a little bit about this fighter. Why does he have a minions-themed room <laughs> in his? House. Oh. Do you have any insights as to his mindset? His um, minion mindset. Uh, uh, <laughs> minion com- Twenty years of combined brain trauma. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, Jose yeah. Aldo. Jose Aldo was, has always been one of my favorite fighters. He is one of the best 145 pounders ever. Incredibly exciting, fun fighter. At one point, an amazing, unbeatable seeming champion. Uh, like many fighters, suffered some vicious beatings towards the end of his career and that probably activated the part of his brain that was like <laughs> oh i'm soothed by s- sleeping on a minion's comforter yeah yeah he, he literally wasn't there before fluently understands what they're saying 
It it means something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I agree. Meanwhile, uh, yeah. Bolson, Bolsonaro has just ruined the Minions bread spread by spilling the contents of his neti pot, which includes... Uh, his, uh, Bolsonaro's neti pot just contains the contents of his stomach that then he then pours into his uh, nasal cavity and then sort of recycles it through himself. I'm picturing him putting water in the neti pot and putting it through his nostrils and it comes out the other side looking like um, the stuff Freddie Quill drinks in The Master. <laughs> like, glowing yellow. <laughs> uh, well, uh, better luck next time to uh, Bolsonaro and uh, the, the, the Brazil-style the Brazil Groypers. Uh, better luck next time for them. But I'd like to move on now to um, another great news story from the weekend that deals with uh, the return of a Chapo favorite. A favorite Chapo character, a man we first encountered live and in person back at CPAC at National Harbor, Maryland. Uh, this, is, this is a favorite story of mine because I get to say the word, and I say word, but it's really more of a sound. That's right. <laughs> schlap. Matt, <laughs> schlap. Schlap, schlap, schlap. He's been, he's been slapping all over the place. And uh, listeners uh, would, okay, so like, you know, over the weekend, I saw the headline. Uh, you know, uh, CP, uh, you know, uh, conservative political action union conference founder, Matt Schlapp accused of groping Herschel Walker staffer. And then I was just like, hmm, do mine eyes deceive me? Click through. And then to find out, listeners, to find out this was a male staffer that he was accused of, uh, I, I, don't know what, I don't know what to believe anymore. Shocking. Because if, yeah. if a guy who's on stage persona is Felix, as you described him, like sort of a community theater director, sort of like the quirky St. Clair of CPAC. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't... It, it's... I literally... You know what? When I first said that, you know, I, I was kind of like, there was something in the back of my mind that was like, I don't know, am I, am I just saying that because he just sounds effeminate? Is this... Am I just doing like a replay of like the Lindsey Graham, Marcus Bachman mm -hmm. thing? Is this like really there? I mean, like who gives a shit? But no, no, he is uh, of that type of that specific type of movement, conservative gay guy. Mm -hmm. And by of that type, I mean, they all have the same fumbling. Uh, ex they're exposed in the same fumbling way, which is basically like. They find a straight guy who they like try to rape in their car, <laughs> yeah. and then and then during work hours, <laughs> yeah, during at like three p.m. And then when the guy like freaks out and runs away, they like try to Facetime him like nine times and are like, "Wait, <laughs> yeah. I think you like misinterpreted me. I was, I was, I was like trying to pull your hamstring. I was, I was doing an office joke. prank on you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like it's so funny. It's like any old white guy with a noun for a last name is like, hey, do you want to <laughs> you want to have an evening to discuss your political future? You need to bring a mace or like a recording device with you. When when you guys um, like contacted us to come on, I was like, OK, who's gay? <laughs> who's gay? Yeah, somebody else so just looked up Congress gay. Yeah, yeah we, got, we, uh, you know, we got a lot of gay stories for the gay chapo today. <laughs> okay, did you guys do you know his wife's name is Mercedes? Mercedes. Yes, that's yeah. a, dead, that's and she's a, a dime. dead and giveaway. She's beautiful. To me. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> a, a, a little bit from the, uh, the, 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 the groping allegations uh, from NBC <laughs> News. It says here, quoting, it says, He reached in between my legs and fondled me, the former Walker staffer told NBC News oh. in a telephone interview. To my shame, I didn't say anything to stop Schlapp. Stop the Schlapp! Stop, stop the Schlapp! <laughs> that, that's, what, that's what people in Brazil were trying to do. They were trying to stop Lula from slapping all over their country. Uh, he goes there, uh, I can see, stop I can the Schlapp! See. I could see Detective Olivia Benson comforting this man and being like, <laughs> yeah, it's not sure. sure. It's, hey, it's very it's normal. Not, yeah. 35% of victims don't <laughs> react when uh, um, assaulted. Yeah. Hey, uh, don't blame, don't blame yourself. Blame Schlapp. Schlap is what happened to you, <laughs> not what you failed to stop. Schlap happens. <laughs> yeah, <they do> a, <laughs> that's Ice T's line. Yeah, they're yeah. doing real sick shit. It's called schlapping. <laughs> schlapping See, my you, crap. I'm schlapping my crap in the corner over here, thinking about Matt Schlap. <laughs> you telling me this is a gay man who married a woman named Mercedes and didn't expect to be found out? <laughs> 
No, he does. He has gay face. He has gay face. Yes. Yeah. You can definitely uh, see it in his. He has like pervy just eyes, just the energy. His little like spiked that up hair cheeks. in the front. Yeah. yeah. It's so gay. This his looks hand. like a guy. This his is a guy hair. who would message you on Grinder and be like, I stand you. <laughs> Your hair is slay. <laughs> <laughs> you are looking yeah. so stand today. <laughs> uh, just uh, a few more yeah, details. He has, like, yeah, he, yeah, he has like it's like he has gay face, but not like the life of like a a confident like out gay man. No, like no. the type of guy who owns a gas station in rural Maryland, and like <laughs> you know. Yeah. Can, can only have sex by like basically impressing surface on shoplifters. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he has the kind of gay face where he's like, um, you could, he's like very, like one of the cops at the beginning of cruising is what I would compare him to, <laughs> honestly. Because it's very like, hi, like, how are you? Like, friendly, kind of mm-hmm. faggy, or can I not say that? Sorry. Yeah. Um, well, you I can, can say, say that. that. Yeah. yeah. Fun. Friendly, like faggy smile, and then suddenly, like a switch flips, and his eyes just go like total dead, like soulless evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and then he just tries to grab your crotch. Like, well, yeah. a few more details from the story. It says, um, the, the mid level Walker aide was assigned to chauffeur Schlapp, who invited to him to meet for drinks that night at the Capitol <laughs> Grill restaurant in the Buckhead section of Atlanta. He believed the extra face to face time could help him solidify a personal connection with one of the party's most influential figures. See, I'm wondering if, like, this mid level Walker staffer, if everyone around the office was like, Yeah, that guy's probably gay. Get him to chauffeur the yeah. Schlapp yeah. around town. And I exactly. was just thinking, <laughs> maybe, just the maybe we're doing him a favor. Office. He could, uh, he could, he could yeah. really have his career uh, helped out by Schlapp. No, if you're if you're put on slap duty, you're sus as hell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you are sus as hell. I'm sorry to dirty tell you. jobs uh, with Mike Rose. Today I'm a slap. Yeah, this is like I I have not seen this guy, but like you know. Knowing that they put him on slap duty tells me he's one of those young 39-year-old conservatives who has, like, mm-hmm. a pompadour, but with the, yeah. the side shaved way too tight. <laughs> and they're like, oh, Literally. he's perfect for this assignment. Yeah. <laughs> he had the tallest hair in the office. I love it. In, the, yeah. in the article I read, it was very funny. It was like, um, he doesn't want to... He wants to remain anonymous so that his future as a GOP politician doesn't get harmed. And it's like, oh, honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey. Uh, as the two men began to drink, the staffer said, Schlapp apologized for the bar being dead. The staffer took Schlapp to Manuel's Tavern, a well-known haunt for Georgia politicos. About let's go to this. Let's away. go to this place I know called the Hole. It's a little more lively. <laughs> 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 I love yeah. Uh, I mean, just like you take taking out like the sexual assault and like closeted aspect of this story, yeah. like hanging out one on one with like a sixty four year old man, and he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, this bar is dead." I'm picturing like, the part in should... Touch of Evil where Orson Welles, uh, the guy's getting Orson Welles drunk. <laughs> Orson <laughs> Welles is just like, "We could kill him, you know. We could do it." <laughs> uh, uh, it's because, yeah, uh, say, sorry, uh, what's it like? Um, uh, so, sorry, this bar in Bankhead, Atlanta isn't quite litty for you, but <laughs> let's go to a different haunt that I know that's uh, called Manuel's. Uh, it says, Schlapp, who drank Tito's vodka during the night, began intruding into my personal space at the second bar, the staffer said. Oh, God. At one point, Schlapp bumped <laughs> into the staffer's gun while their legs touched, the staffer said, prompting Schlapp to, <laughs> Schlapp to ask what he was carrying. <laughs> Oh wait, my wait, God. wait, 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 wait. So this, guy, like this guy had, had a gun, gun on him. He had a gun on him and he still, and he still allowed this slap to slap him up? What is the point? His ground? What is the point of 2A if you still get grouped by <laughs> that slap? Yeah. Yeah, literally. Like, like, no, like a well-regulated militia is supposed to prevent this. It, it would be not. funny if he, he like double tapped him in the dome. <laughs> <after one time. laughs> he would uh, literally be the new like president. He would be the uh, president. Of the year. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, no, uh, <laughs> it's a uh, uh, Schlapp is uh, the Martin Scorsese cameo in Taxi Driver. He's just driving around yeah. going, hey, <laughs> hey, that's my campaign office up there. You know who's in there? Not not Herschel Walker. He's not in there. You ever see what a 44 Magnum does to a campaign staffer's pussy? <laughs> Uh, I mean, no, this, one, I'm one so more shocked here. there aren't more allegations. Like, no way this guy hasn't been doing this for 20 Oh, forever. Years. Well, yeah. Milo claimed, Milo Yiannopoulos. Oh, yeah. He also... Yeah. Former Marjorie Taylor Greene intern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, former... <laughs> Marjorie Taylor Greene intern and frequent user of random social media apps, Milo Yiannopoulos. <laughs> <laughs> Milo Yiannopoulos, like, hey guys, I'm on uh, Such The Whale chaser. this weekend. Not the movie, the uh, the new social media website that's just <laughs> the worst version of Twitter that'll be closed out in a month. Yeah, he he has gone through all the, like, nine apps that claim to be Vine successors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just flopping just- on every single one. Uh, just the, uh, uh, a few more details from the allegations. It says here, are you uncomfortable looking at me? Schlapped ass later, making the aide even more uncomfortable than he already was, he said. In short order, he told Schlapp that he had an early morning and it was best to call it a night. When the two arrived at the hotel, Schlapp invited the staffer to his room. The staffer said the staffer declined. Within a couple of hours, around 12.45 a.m., the staffer began recording videos of himself recounting what had happened, which he shared with NBC News. <laughs> That's so funny. The uh, what? Uh, well, I'm not pretty enough for you is like a grinder <laughs> message. The funniest, <laughs> most like uh, meth head grinder message possible <laughs> is like someone DMs you a picture of themselves and they're like, "Hey," and then two minutes later, "What am I not? I'm sorry, I'm not gorgeous enough for you. You fucking like stuck up bitch." <laughs> no, <laughs> really oh, suit, oh, suit gay yourself training then. day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> didn't know you that, wanted to cope with your career though <laughs> that, those internships you know assistant <laughs> those, are pop- those are poppers <laughs> <laughs> but I know I was shocked No, for no one else to come forward just means that the GOP is definitely getting gayer and gayer and gayer. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. like, he must have grabbed so many crotches, this guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Uh, unless this was his soulmate. Unless, you know, <laughs> unless he found the one. He found the one. <laughs> I mean, he had like, too much Tito's. And he was like, sorry, I'm not pretty enough. <laughs> And dropped him off at home. <laughs> that, is very, that is a very romantic way and to that, look at it. That yeah. he... <laughs> I mean, like, logic dictates, like, there's no reason for him to go to any of these places. There's no, like, special expertise he offers anyone. Clearly, like, he was just visiting campaigns for the entirety of his career just so he could, like, you know, corner a, a guy like, yeah, give yeah. it a chauffeur who, who he could, you know, then attempt to, like, hold down and suck his cock forcefully. <laughs> yeah, but, he got he got death in Venice by a guy named, like, Caden, uh, Richardson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like 35. Yeah. He, this guy, he, th- like, no one has sexually assaulted more guys named Colson than yeah. Matt Schlapp. <laughs> but I do like your idea that he just, he never, maybe he felt like a tingling of this impulse before, but this was just, he just connected with this guy. This was just like the one. That is a very beautiful way to think of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's how he should spin it. And that should be his PR situation. Come out and be like, I'm gay. And I just, I met my soulmate that night. <laughs> what Katie, please like? answer yeah. my calls. Please answer. What? And then his, like- soulmate, his soulmate texted back and said, I'd love help with my career after you lose 40 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> the, like, what do guys like this even fucking talk about? Like, at the bar? Like, what could they put? Like, no, no. you've seen Air Force One. <laughs> That's a really good movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, okay. Uh, may- maybe, maybe Schlapp just needed, he needs a chauffeur and he's got to complain about the old ball and chain Mercedes. And I would like to talk now a little bit about uh, this is, this is a, this is a New York Times profile that came out in 2018. And people are pointing out, like, this is a, 
you know, so the New York Times trying to like do a little beat sweetening for the Trump White House. So they give this uh, big puff piece profile to the the Washington's hot new power couple. <laughs> Title of the article, Meet the Schlaps. <laughs> 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 How do you not change your last name if it's <laughs> Schlapp? It's so disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen to this. It says, uh, this is a, a profile. Uh, this is a Meet the Schlaps, the Trump, Washington's Trump era it couple by Elizabeth Williamson for the New York Times. It says here, uh, so they're at a dinner and it says, uh, uh, Ms. Schlapp's cell phone beckoned every few minutes as Mr. Schlapp, who said he had gained some 50 pounds during the campaign, ordered a green salad and offered to split the entree with his wife. He looked weary. The Schlapps have spent the weekend schlepping to multiple performances of their daughter, Viana's school play, in which she played uh, Liza in Viana. The Sound of Music. <laughs> Drag queen ass. Okay, sorry. Is this an extra? Viana. <laughs> Viana Schlapp, mama. <laughs> this, it sounds like the new Thomas Pynchon book that you're reading an excerpt from, literally. <laughs> no, but I feel like, I remember back in CPAC, you said his his presence on stage was like a guy going places everybody places yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and come to find out that he spent the weekend going to multiple performances of his daughter's performance like his daughter's appearing in the sound of music <laughs> yeah, and this was okay and this was the year that republicans lost the house and senate and match Lap spent all of this year just like bullying the bullying his daughter's understudies <laughs> <laughs> power couple indeed yeah. <laughs> so, so and he wait uh, he gained 50 so over the course of a campaign uh well let's generously assume 50 he pounds. means like 50 pounds the that general is crazy that's so much weight to gain yeah. like how long is the yeah. campaign He's gay. That means he was gaining weight. If we're going by general election campaign, he was gaining weight at a rate of ten pounds a month. <laughs> so he like not notice. You know he. You know he is one of those old gay guys who's like, take this away from me. I don't. I can't even look at it. I can't be in the room with it. And it's like a fiber one cheese Would you cake split flavor fries? bar. <laughs> Would you split fries? Oh, we can't even. We can't even. We shouldn't. Yeah. You're ready. You shouldn't. Take it away from me. Can you get us? Can you bring us fries? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, <I can't. laughs> yes. He's so he's so large fry, small salad in a diet coke. <laughs> That's salad that he ordered for this interview is probably the first salad he's ordered <laughs> in his life. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> uh, it says here, um, the Schlapps met in the George W. Bush White House where Ms. Schlapp, who is known as Mercy and grew up in Miami as the daughter of a Cuban emigre, was a liaison to Hispanic and speci uh, specialty news media outlets. Mr. Schlapp rose to the role of White House political director. He grew up in Wichita, Kansas, where he was a top-ranked tennis player and taught Charles Koch's son, Chase, how to play. Mr. Mm -hmm. Schlapp, who... <laughs> Mr. Schlapp... Teaching Charles Koch's son. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Schlapp, who had a preference for apparel emblazoned with the leprechaun mascot of his alma mater, Notre Dame, <laughs> was nervous about asking the glamorous Mercy for a sad. date. But the couple bonded over dinner at Morton's, a Washington steakhouse, where Ms. Oh. Schlapp ordered a slab of beef. I thought, I'm going to like this girl. She didn't get bird food, Mr. Schlapp said. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, that's, that's, usually how, that's usually how you assess your uh, attraction to a potential yeah. woman is what she orders at dinner. As he's eating bird food in the interview, <laughs> salad. <laughs> and I love the idea that bird food means like woman food. He's using like the British use of bird. <laughs> she's, she's, a man bird. Food. she's a top bird. She's a top bird. She's not having proper. She's having. She ordered proper scran at the footy. <laughs> so he he was like he was like intimidated by her because she was too glamorous. But then she ordered like I guess an entire porterhouse to herself and just housed like twenty eight ounces of beef. And he's like, oh, I could make this work. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a lavender marriage. Honestly, they might both be gay. That's, I could see, I could see Mercedes. Yeah. Mercedes is one of those like blazier lesbians. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That could be beautiful as well for them. I, I just like that they're, they're, they both just eat actual bird food now, now that they're cutting. <laughs> they, just, they have a feeder. <laughs> That's how he got so big. <laughs> Caramel loading with bird food. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, would you like to come back to my hotel room? I've got a great salt lick we can uh, tuck into. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's also so sad to be a closet gay guy who has like a, a blazer with the Notre Dame leprechaun on it, which is one of the worst logos ever created. Is like so funny. That's like I I couldn't make up a worse outfit for a guy to wear. <laughs> I couldn't. You couldn't imagine a bigger red flag if someone was dressed like a literal red flag. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's he's meeting with college mascots and offering to help them with their career. <laughs> <laughs> he's in love with the Notre Dame leprechaun <laughs> he's just so feisty <laughs> he's got some fight in him <laughs> uh, so yeah uh, we've uh, We've met the Schlaps, man. What what a what a story. What a couple. I mean, of course, I I, I should I should state for the record, Matt Schlapp uh, was they they did reach out to him for multiple uh, news accounts in this article. He uh, has not um, uh, made a comment uh, other than to say that these uh, through through a spokesperson to say that these allegations are completely false. And he's been you know this is a political hit job on one of the most powerful uh, conservative leaders in the country. So just to be clear, these are all allegations about Schlapp slapping. These are all. These are just slaps at this point. They're slaps. We will update further if it becomes uh, verified. Just throwing shit at a wall and seeing which slaps. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the sound of a hand covered in uh, like lube hitting someone's ass. Yep, it's like a slap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a summer sausage hitting a wall. <laughs> By the way, I promise I'm a much calmer, nicer guy uh, than it comes across on these interviews. Sometimes I get my Irish up just a little bit. Uh, and I also, thank you, and I apologize that I'm up here solo uh, because my feisty and beautiful wife, who I'm so proud of, uh, she's decided to become a multitasker. And yes, she's the better and more famous television star uh, defending our conservative values every day. I'm proud of you, sweetheart. I know you're somewhere here. I can see you. Uh, well, I got I got one more one news story from the weekend. Uh, did any of you watch uh, Prince Harry's appearance uh, being interviewed by uh, Anderson Cooper on 60 Minutes last night? No. I did not. Oh my God. Okay, I, all, 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 I, all I wanted to I mean, like the, the the interview was pretty funny. I was talking with Matt about it. Uh, we were talking with Matt about it last night, and I think the takeaway from the interview is one. Unlike his dad and brother, Harry has it like he uh, absorbs his mother's ability to appear like a normal person in an interview, but mm -hmm. like only so much because I totally agree with Matt that this guy 1000% believes that um, his family had his mother killed and is just swallowing it because that's the one thing that he can't put in the book. You know, yeah. he'll put stuff about getting his again, he's uh, having his dick get frostbitten and like doing cocaine at seventeen. But he can't he can't share his uh, let's just say uh, suspicions about what really happened to his mother. I just want to share this one part about how the interview opened. Uh, Anderson Cooper asks him, "You write about a contentious meeting you had with him, meaning Prince William, in 2021. You said I looked at Willie, really looked at him, maybe for the first time since we were born, since we were boys." I took it all in. His familiar scowl, which had always been his default in dealings with me. His alarming baldness, more advanced <laughs> than my own. His famous resemblance to mummy, which was fading with time, with age. <laughs> and Jesus. Cooper says, That's pretty cutting. Prince Harry goes, I don't see it as cutting at all. Um, you know, my brother and I love each other. <laughs> So, oh, I, I can definitely see him his doing alarming the, baldness. Yeah, doing this <laughs> doing a bitchy baldness. thing. <laughs> Something you, like, like Ben would say to Jacques. <laughs> right, it's like you in, you insult someone, and then they're like, "That's that's really rude." You're like, "Actually, I didn't mean it in a mean way. I was just being descriptive." It's just <laughs> I'm not deciding value. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> I guess like if there's a revelation here. It's how much he hates his older brother, and I guess yeah. like how could you not? But I mean, there's some there's some other pretty cool stuff here. Like, um, I uh, says he, uh, <laughs> Prince Harry took cocaine at 17 and killed 25 people in Afghanistan. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, yeah. And someone, yeah. Somebody can relate to at least one of those things. <laughs> I don't. Okay, the 25 the 25 people is insane. And it's his, insane. Doesn't he say afterwards like? Oh, I don't feel bad about it because he they said, weren't people to me. They were just targets or something. No, he said, he, he said, said, my said, no, he said, I, said I viewed them chessboard. as chess pieces, as pieces in a chess game. Yeah. God. But it's like, like, I don't believe that. Okay, so he killed at least 
like four times as many people as King Vaughn. How how do you tell that you killed twenty five Afghans? It isn't COD. There's no scoreboard. It isn't kill confirmed. <laughs> you don't pick up the dog tags. Like did did someone tell him? Is there a record keeper? Was well, he just he was gunning down POWs? Pilot. Well, he's a helicopter I mean, pilot. Those guns have cameras on them. So. Okay, fine. <laughs> but you could, I'd be like, okay. well, you said like, how how could he kill twenty five people? He flew a fucking helicopter. That's just one squeeze of the the trigger there. However, I have a theory about this. Now, Felix, you 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 suspect that the claim, the twenty five body count for Prince Harry is cap. Are you are you yeah. throwing the, you throwing the cap King flag Vaughn, on that? Can you picture King Vaughn getting slapped to the ground by <laughs> Prince William? <laughs> I can't. Vaughn, you're right. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> With one, like one third the bodies. <laughs> okay, that that is your that is that is your take on this, Felix. I I'm going to slightly agree with you. I think he did. He has. He did not kill 25 people in Afghanistan. I think he killed one person, but it wasn't a person. It was a giant. He killed one of the giants <laughs> in Afghanistan that the government is covering oh, up, shit. and one giant equals twenty five human beings. So <laughs> that's so true. Oh he's part, God, of, he's part of the the, psych, the giant slash cyclops cover up that's going on right now. He killed the uh, giant they, who killed Pat Tillman. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's exactly. a movie. That's the he movie got, they should yeah. make. <laughs> he, he avenged Pat Tillman. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, there, I, mean, I, I also mentioned this, of course. His uh, there, there's the frostbitten cock incident, which again, I have to. I'm throwing a cap flag on this. Uh, a yeah. flag on the play. It says Prince Harry is being ridiculed online after revealing that he suffered a frostbitten todger during a 2011 <laughs> North Pole trip, which made for a miserable time at the wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton. His frosted phallus fiasco. This is the Daily Mail, by the way. So they got oh my god out here was one of many bombshells broken by Page Six after obtaining a copy of the Duke of Sussex much type memoir. Upon arriving home, I'd been horrified to discover that my nether regions were frostnip. The now 38-year-old ex-royal had described the shrinkage-inducing saga, which transpired following a 200-mile Arctic <laughs> charity walk in May 2011. Okay, first of all, this is how fucking bored you are as a royal, is that you're doing 200-mile fucking the Arctic charity walks? What are you, like, what? Shackleton did that and half the guys in his expedition died. And you're not doing this for, like, a, a food pantry or something? What the fuck but also i don't believe okay i believe that his todger got frostbitten but like that doesn't just happen you know i'm mean, how like, did that where, like, I, was his was, dick out while he was hiking he was getting topped off by a penguin or something he was trying to molest the <laughs> penguin like yeah they style. were doing some horrible skull and bones ritual out there <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah oh absolutely yeah. i mean that's the only he must he have, was getting <laughs> He was My getting genuine slapped by a polar bear. <laughs> he was getting slapped by a polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> polar bear no, pussy is mighty cold. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, just your would your dick just recover from being frostbit? Like, I mean, no, I don't wild, think yeah. it would. It seems right? like that. Turns if black any part of, it, yeah, if any part of your body is just gonna fall off, you would think it'd be your car. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> But I like, think my honest, honestly, what I think it was is it was probably like a dare, like a stupid dare that yeah. happened that worse. One of his friends was like, Oi, yeah. Harry, I bet you won't have sex with the snow. Yeah. <laughs> like, Oi, you think I won't? <laughs> All right, watch this. <laughs> like, an hour later, he's like, I don't feel so good. I don't, <laughs> I don't think that was a good idea. Listen, listen you cunt. Listen, you cunt. I gave that snow a right, Roger, and then now I'm going just put it off. <laughs> See, I think he did it on purpose just so we could fuck up his brother's wedding. You know, you're supposed to be your brother's best man. You're like, ow, my dick is frozen. It hurts. I can't put pants on. My dick. Rachel getting married, but with <laughs> Prince Harry and his frozen cock. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I keep loading... referencing <laughs> movies. It's so uh, no, it's okay. Like. Instead of loading up the dishwasher, they're like loading it with, uh, I don't know, like uh, children. They're putting children in the machine. <laughs> That's what they do in the uh, royal wedding. <laughs> it's, uh, the only way I can differentiate these two is the bald one and the one who's not, because truly my only reference point for the royal family is um, the little gay kid. The Prince, Prince George. 
<laughs> the little gay one. <laughs> the little gay kid is the so little, iconic. I love the little gay one. The little gay one is so cute. He's so funny. Yeah, we've he's talked about this. Just <laughs> like, he's just, there's so many pictures of him just like lightly holding his palm over his heart or like doing a double yeah, wave. Yeah, limp wristed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so cute. They're like, like, stop it, damn it. <laughs> after, the, after the queen died, I looked up the family... Uh, like line to power and I was like okay how many of these old weird fuckers have to die for us to get a little boy queen I need it to be <laughs> we need an, uh, how many we need people an need evil to get... like eight year old queen is <laughs> yes. what we need it's so cool <laughs> an eight year old gay queen yes. <laughs> uh, I believe uh, George is William's son so yeah. I think okay. Charles has to die and then William has to die and does George have an older brother I think there's a there's a I don't... really there's an old one there's like a weird, <laughs> it's an, ugly old one. It's an one old one who's not gay. <laughs> Fuck him. Yeah. It's a weird, yeah. ugly old one. <laughs> a weird, ugly old man. We just have to get them all in a, yeah. a helicopter. They Just a Kobe situation yeah, where they're flying somewhere well, else. No, 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 no. No, get Prince Harry in a helicopter and fly over them. You know, yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. It's like, <laughs> they're, they're yeah, just they're chess just, pieces. They're, they're Three queens. Old. And when you, when, you get, when, you get, when you get George, when you get the gay King George, that's checkmate. <laughs> And then you mm-hmm. knock over the piece. <laughs> Absolute checkmate. <It's> so cool. <laughs> That's mate in three moves. Charles, William, George. Get him in there. It also is so funny to describe shooting people from like probably like an Apache helicopter with like a 40 millimeter cannon uh, to describe that as like a chess game. Like their chess yeah. pieces to you, it's like so <laughs> psycho, so yeah. American yeah. psycho to be yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. They're just pawns. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I, I call I call unloading like uh, ten thousand fifty caliber bullets in like ten seconds at a wedding party. That's called the Sicilian defense. You should study it. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, closing out closing out the show today, I have a, a reading series that an eagle-eyed uh, listener of ours uh, suggested for today, and it's a very good one. It comes courtesy of the New York Post, and you know it deals with an issue that I think is becoming uh, more and more of a problem. That's right. I'm talking about the woke mind virus, and you know mm-hmm. there's a lot of there's a lot of the woke mind virus going around, and you know I think. <laughs> I think I'm probably going to be the first one ever to make this comparison, but like, have you, have any of you noticed that like wokeness is the new religion? It's like a religion. Yeah. yeah. It's like a religion. I was, I was, it's like religion, but I was like, just too scared to say it. <laughs> you, know, yeah, was, like, you were too scared to say it. I thought I was the first one to notice that, but I think we all may have realized that independent of each other. Yeah. Well, here's the thing though. Uh, religions usually are pretty good, you know, but wokeness, that's not good. What's the bad side of religion? That's right. Cults. Well, mm-hmm. this is not the new religion. It's the new cult. That's so true. For, and then for people who have lost family members to this cult, they're beginning to turn to the figure of a deprogrammer. This is an article in the New York Post headlined, Parents say their sk- kids were brainwashed at school. Seek deprogrammers. This is about Florida, like a Florida mom who wants to deprogram her kids from being woke and gender. And there are people that are going to offer their services to de-woke and de-gender uh, children. I'm just I would like to be say honest. That, um, I want that job. I is huge. <laughs> yeah. I'm really, so, really so fumbling. Like, like, I am really fumbling the bag by not <laughs> opening up my like? own the Benmar Institute for <laughs> deprogramming your lib children. <laughs> well, I, I love, could make so I much money. <laughs> Yeah, yeah they're, they're, there's some really good shit here. They, I mean, I mean you, yeah. you can give us, you can audition here for the the yeah, no. of the of the woke virus, <laughs> like rounding up a bunch of blue haired kids and being like, "You're gonna go into this restaurant and you're gonna leave a pocket Bible as a tip." All right. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea. I like like that is such a good second act for. For Ben, like to be like yes. the Ray, to be like the Ray Donovan for they fab daughters. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you just come in and fix that situation. You, you are I, the one they call in for that. Be so much money. I'm sure they make this. <laughs> and like oh the, the person who's doing it now is this like fat lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the deprogramming it. lady is like. She she seems like someone who just specializes in being at the forefront of the most annoying cultural trends. Like, this is someone who was doing, like, sensitivity trainings in 
cafes in like 2013. And now she's realized that those tides have yeah. shifts. And now she's, yeah. just, you know, finding the next grift. The richest like parents, the most annoying parents in the world to try and like deprogram yeah. their children. But also, yeah, no, it's like, I would oh, like your to kid say... is a hysteric fucking idiot. Who do you think they got that <laughs> from? You fucking <laughs> <laughs> the, um, I would also like to say I I buy a copy of the post every morning because to read page six. And it's really like I really hate doing it because Mm -hmm. on the cover every single day of the post it's like it'll say something like the walking dead and there'll be a picture of like um a migrant child crossing the border <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. so yeah. I, I always try it's to flip bad. to page six before i put it on the counter but they yeah. have so many their like articles about lgbt shit have gotten so desperate recently like um i saw one the other day that was like former u.s marine navy seal come it comes out about uh you know being pressured to be trans and then uh yeah you know reversing it and it was like a a guy who transitioned from male to female at age like 37 <laughs> and then now he's like 50 and detransitioned and is like I'm just nervous that other people can get tricked like I did. <laughs> <laughs> you already joined the military, <laughs> asshole. Yeah. And it, pretty, the article is like pretty because easy it's the mark. post. <laughs> because yeah. it's the post, it's like um uh so and so who, you know, is 50 with like 200 confirmed kills, eight purple hearts and one medal of honor. <laughs> it's like so fucking stupid. <laughs> Well, uh, this New York Post article does not disappoint. Uh, it begins like this. Beth Penske, a 54-year-old single mother from New Jersey who now lives in Florida, never tells anyone that she's estranged from her only son and daughter. Okay, throwing the cat flag on that, she tells that to everyone she yeah. has. Yeah, absolutely. She's, really tell she's telling it to the Post right she's now, telling bitch. The New York Post. <laughs> Usually I keep I, this in kind of private, but with the, for the New York I, Post, I'll put my my family, my, my the fact that my kids hate me. That's going on the front page of the yeah. major national newspaper. Ninety eight percent of cashiers have heard this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Every yeah. Publix cashier in the, the town that she lives in. Well, Bolsonaro <laughs> yeah. You stole <laughs> Bolsonaro. <laughs> Bolsonaro. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, she says I lie all the time said Penske who told the post her kids have rejected her because they're woke and she is not I can't tell anyone I don't have a relationship with them I have so I had so much shame about it it looks awful for me and makes me feel terrible so I lie it's like this is a coping strategy that I'm sure Miss Penske is very familiar with. Literally, like um, hanging out with your gay friends and being like, "I look so awful right now." <laughs> That's what she's doing to the post reporter. I look terrible right now. Oh my god, I'm so ugly. I look so bricked up. Like. I gained like three pounds. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, no! <laughs> it's You're not embarrassing. <laughs> uh. But her attitude changed when she and a number of other mothers read a post story in November about Annabella Rockwell, a graduate of Mount Holyoke College, who claimed she'd been totally indoctrinated into hard left ideologies at the school and had to be deprogrammed. <laughs> I saw Annabella's story and my life turned upside down, Penske said. I realized I wasn't alone and I saw what happened to her was similar to what hap I think happened to my kids. I've never even considered trying to find a deprogrammer. I didn't know they even existed, but I think it's too late for me and my kids. They won't even talk to me. So here's what you do. Beth, you got to fake an illness. Like, fake that you have cancer, that you're on your deathbed. Get your kids to come and then as soon as they're in the room, boom, deprogramming starts. Start yes. showing them those Prager U videos. <laughs> put them in the Clockwork Orange setup. You start lock the door. Cue, cue up some Matt Walsh, and yeah, let the let the let the let the, let the my kids have been brainwashed. So let the brainwashing commence. Also, Annabella Rockwell. I just looked it up. Uh, the post story was in November. They said. Uh huh. She would have been, I think, thirty-four years old. Like all these people, they pretend that they're like college students. It's like this weird thing I've noticed. Where they pretend these people are college students. They say like Mount Holyoke graduate, and this woman graduated from Mount Holyoke in twenty fourteen. 
<laughs> so that is <laughs> almost ten years. These are ago. these are people who have conscious memories of the Carter administration being like, I think <laughs> yeah. I think someone pushed hormone blockers onto me too young. <laughs> Twenty fourteen when I was, the woke <laughs> mind virus was at its most rampant, famously. <laughs> <laughs> I was forty five when I was brainwashed. <laughs> so it says a. Uh, a Manhattan mother of five daughters told the Post that she saw their indoctrination into gender and race ideology start at Dalton, one of New York City's poshest private academies. Jeffrey Epstein, former math teacher there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and worsened when her girls went to college. Most of them went to Ivy League schools. See, here's the other thing. I think a lot of this, like, complaining that college brainwashed my kid shit is, like, the yeah. contemporary equivalent of having a bumper sticker that says, like, my kid's on the honor roll or, like, Harvard mm. or Yale. It's just, like, it's a way of saying my kid's got into a good school. But, yeah, like, ooh, damn, ooh, the whole, fa the whole family now. sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The emotional stress is unbelievable, said the mother, who did not want to be publicly identified. Uh, I consider myself a Democrat and a liberal, but it doesn't matter. I've had fights sure. with some of my girls. <laughs> I've had fights with some of hey, Ben, this is where you come in. I've had fights mm. with some of my girls just because I wouldn't get myself a rainbow pride Starbucks cup. <laughs> the cup itself became this huge battleground. Apparently it matters what cup you hold. <laughs> Okay, so this woman is the most borderline personality disorder person I've ever heard of in my entire life. To be to tell that many lies in a row, at that she's, kind of she's like, definitely lying. She's definitely screamed at someone at Starbucks. No, for she giving harassed. Her she harassed a, a pride cup. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> then to to like um, started off by being like, I'm a Democrat and a liberal, actually, but this cup. Can I speak to your manager, please? But and also, then, like, look, the kids even... just being like, Mom, please stop. Please yeah, stop. please shut up. Please <laughs> shut up. Please shut up. But, like, even in the rare event that her children are, like, really uniquely annoying enough to be like, Mom, you don't have the pride cup in your hand. Uh, you're homophobic. Like, even if that is the case, you taught them to be that way. It's yes. your failing as a, pa as a parent. My brother having... in Christ, you made these children. <laughs> yeah, it's like these are your kids, bitch. <laughs> Ma'am, you uh, can't return this coffee. There's you already poured Bailey's into it, sir. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, the mother said uh, two of her daughters have tried to estrange themselves from her because they're critical of what they see as her lack of political correctness and disinterest in gender and race ideology. We actually would be estranged if it weren't for me not giving up, the mother told the Post. I keep that coming is, back. There's <laughs> so much there. <laughs> wait, wait, Hessa, listen to this. She says, we would be estranged if it weren't for me not giving up. I keep coming back to the battlefield. I wanted a deprogrammer, but didn't know where to get one, so I try to do it myself. A little bit of, little bit of wildcat <laughs> cult deprogramming, just a little freelance on the side, I, just a little hobby I picked up. A lot of other deprogrammers don't like my maverick style of deprogramming. <laughs> <laughs> Walker, Texas deprogrammer. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, here's we get into like the uh, the, the actual the, the actual person who's offering in, uh, their services as a deprogrammer. Uh, it says K. Yang, 36, a former activist for trans and gay rights in upstate New York, at one point identified with they them pronouns, but she said uh, she deprogrammed herself before, before becoming a full time deprogrammer in 2018, and is now is busier than ever. So it's it's boom times for people for yes, self appointed deprogrammers. What's this woman's name again? I'm just, K. Uh, Yang. K. Yang. And they're just like the, the letter K and then Yang is how they're attributed in the post article. Oh my God, amazing. Yeah, no, she, she truly it, just seems like someone who is, like I said, specialized in being annoying at the right time for a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it says, in addition to her website, Stop Female Erasure, Yang has a website called <laughs> The Deprogrammer and runs a YouTube account under the handle The Deprogrammer and works with parents and their children individually. Okay, th I, she's not she's not working with anyone. By works with, she means people comment on her YouTube and then she <laughs> is, will give a quote if solicited by a New York Post journalist. And the picture is her in like the burnt over district, like <laughs> next to a sign that's like, this is where women's rights started. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yes. So funny. It says Yang often leads anti-gender ideology protests at gender clinics and prisons. I just like, <laughs> she's outside a gender crazy. prison. 
<laughs> That's actually so scary because, like, imagine being a trans woman in like prison, either men's or women's prison, and this psycho shows up to give a presentation to the whole prison about how you are completely a psycho hypnotized Manchurian candidate for wokeness. That's like so crazy. <laughs> yeah. I hate getting moved to the to the woke general population part of the prison. <laughs> <laughs> I need protective uh, custody. I, need I guess that's, that, that's what that's what M City in Oz was. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Which is that the J.K. Simmons guy? Yeah. Or? Well, yeah, well they, no, he was the opposite. Like the, it's the, yeah, he he he's he's based. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Emerald Emerald City, like J.K. Simmons was Emerald in like City the regular cringe. part of the prison. Uh, Emerald City is cringe and lib because they have like an open office arrangement, whereas J.K. Simmons and the Nazis are in like the traditional prison, prison part of prison. <laughs> like, uh, there's a lot. I guess I don't know. I'm pretty sure this character showed up in one of the many seasons of Oz. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm sure. It says here, um, uh, she uh, leads anti-gender ideology. Pro- <laughs> I like. I, I just want to remove the word ideology and just. I want to go to an anti-gender protest outside of prison <laughs> 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 or a clinic, a uh, gender clinic. It says uh, as well as at the National Monument in Washington D.C. So she's leading an anti-gender protest right next to a giant stone cock. Good yeah. Job. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're fighting for. This is what we got to deprogram people. Fallout uh, Three t- mod that puts her in the game. <laughs> The National Mall. Uh, uh, a typical did YouTube they say, video. They, how many people show up for this? Yeah, like, just, do they I get numbers? I feel like it's probably just her screaming at a yeah. building. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what it seems it like. That's be. exactly what yeah. it seems like. Yeah, because I the pictures that accompany this article are so funny because it is just both of these psychotic women alone in the middle of a field. Like, yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, then I love the one like where no one even wants to be next to them. She's holding up the um, gender ideology flyers, and they look like they're designed to um, look like lottery tickets. <laughs> like, which I think is yeah, a... they look like. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm reading what says: uh, "Stop female erasure in language and in law around the world." Uh, then it says, uh, "Trended gender ideology defies basic biology," and then the other says, "Lucky pot o gold." <laughs> <laughs> it's so <laughs> so cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It says here, um, a lot of these parents are completely bewildered, Yang said. A lot of them noticed a marked difference in their children's behavior. Then all of a sudden, she identifies as he. A lot of this is like a cult, ex- except parents don't realize their child is being indoctrinated. Not from an old-fashioned cult that takes you away somewhere, but through schools and their devices. <laughs> this is happening to kids everywhere, even with those with a robust family life. Tennessee-born Ted Patrick, now 92, was well known. He tra- he just transitioned, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, yeah, Ted Patrick is the they father got me of late, y'all. programming. <laughs> Formerly oh, Roberta it's, Patrick. <laughs> uh, it's worse now than it was then. Patrick said of the 1970s, but parents are more scared and weak than they were, but were then. You've got to get these kids alone. I've snatched people from Yale. I deal with the mind. <laughs> <laughs> what the mind? He's a Yale snatcher. <laughs> I love the idea of He's a guy. Parents are weak now. I love the idea of a guy who like was one of the white students who tried to prevent like uh, integration of schools. Being like, it's way worse now for woke <laughs> woke ideology is way crazier now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it goes, I've snatched people from Yale. I deal with the mind. You have to go into the mind, into that container, and bring the real person out. So this, this guy, guy is 92? Like an absolute quack. <laughs> yeah, he's 92 years old and talking like I just, this. like, imagine trying to explain, like, woke gender ideology to a 92-year-old. It's just elder abuse. Like, trying to be like, hey, do you like, got frog person? You want to know about that, Grandpa? It's like, be in jail for that. <laughs> Uh, okay, going back to it says uh, this is another mom. It says Dorothy said that they have been estranged off and on since her daughter's sophomore year in college. 
with the young woman once refusing to go to Thanksgiving dinner with the family because she said they were celebrating Columbus's genocide. <laughs> she had what she called an awakening and became very angry at me and her father, Dorothy said. It was a big personality change. We are conservative, so it became a huge problem. We were not allowed to visit her on campus. She went on a mission to convert her brother against us. She told him that he should uh, be against us because we're conservatives and that we should all be against men. What really scares me, Dorothy added, is that it reminds me of the Cultural Revolution in China, where there was a whole lost generation of kids who hated mm -hmm. their parents. Period. Yeah, a phenomenon that's only happened in China Period. in the 70s. It's, <laughs> it's so funny to have, like, an entire article about the idea of, like, adults being like, my kid grew up and decided they don't think the same thing as me, and that I'm, like, so annoying and insane that they don't want to be, like... Uh, connected with me anymore so i hired um a deprogrammer to <laughs> fix their mind <laughs> well i mean i think i think like the the, the figure of a deprogrammer is very attracted to people like this because i think it just is like a mirror reflection of how they acquire their the beliefs that they have which is just yeah basically having someone berate them into you know breaking down their identity and reforming it within a group context it's just you know so he's like oh well, what's the opposite of that we need to do that to my kids <laughs> yeah <laughs> wait there's a there's a one really funny uh, quote here from uh, from Kay Yang. Also, this reminds me of the um, SVU episode with Isabella Johnny, where or not Isabella Johnny, Isabel Huppert, where Isabel Huppert <laughs> hires um, a like cult rescue specialist to save her son. No, no, no. Her no, her, her, her her ex husband hires the cult deprogrammer to get uh, get her get the kid away from Isabel Huppert because she's like a a radical matriarchist. She's a, she's a misandrist. Well, she's actually, well, what what happens? They each hire um, oh. cult rescuers, and <laughs> Isabel Huppert's cult rescuer is a cool mer former marine guy who has like a base of operations and everything and her husband's cult rescuist is like a psycho who kills himself and the kid i i somehow have not seen this svu episode whoa I really it's my favorite episode, episode. Yeah. it's so good all right well i know which one i'm watching tonight <laughs> Absolutely. it's very rare for me to hear of an svu episode i've not heard i've not i watched. think i watched it with will last time i was last time we hung out oh yeah yeah we were, we were we were deep into the S S SVU and then the Isabel Huppert. That's like the that's that that's the Cadillac of SVU guest mm -hmm. appearances. Because man, that one, <laughs> that one comes out of nowhere. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> coming up this season, Charlotte Gainsbourg on <laughs> SVU. <laughs> uh, Kay Yang on SVU <laughs> playing herself. I <laughs> know <laughs> uh, this, is what, this is what Kay Yang says. She goes, uh, it, it's your point, Ben, about how she's always been on the, uh, the cutting edge of annoying people. She says, I thought I was on the cutting edge of promoting rights for gay people, Yang said. <laughs> but then I started looking deeper into where this was coming from and who was paying for it. And I started to get very disillusioned. We were with children talking about sexuality and gender identity without the knowledge or consent of their parents. So this is when she uh, began her career as a gender activist, but now she's a gender deprogrammer. Yeah, you need the consent of the parents famously. <laughs> Everything you do with the consent of the parents <laughs> to a child <laughs> is completely moral and the right thing to do. Um, especially when they're over 18, when they're legal adults and... Uh, should be able to think yeah. for themselves. That's when you really need to hire a deprogrammer and try and <laughs> fix them. <laughs> I was talking to a 92-year-old about sex and gender without the consent of his parents. <laughs> I'm so sick of explaining to all of my cousins at Christmas dinner that um, the kids aren't here because I flipped out about... Um, <laughs> Hunter Schaefer or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so back to back to Beth Pensky, the uh, the person who was willing to give her name to the New York Post. It says that's when the break really happened. Pensky said they told me Florida is full of white supremacists and that I was becoming one. My son said Florida is a scary place full of racist people. <laughs> wow, so such cap. That's completely untrue. <laughs> I can't believe the sun said that. I also love this bitmoji ass picture of her praying yeah. on the stairs. <laughs> the pictures of her like bitmoji. The pictures of her are really, really good. She's completely alone <laughs> in all of them. 
<laughs> uh, Joshua hasn't spoken to his mother in four years. One year ago, Penske said Haley told her mother not to contact her anymore. Penske's son said no comment when reached by the post. <laughs> Penske's daughter did not return calls. <laughs> but Beth Penske's ex-husband, Andrew Penske, backed up everything she said in a call to the post. Andrew said he has slightly more contact with his two kids, but not much. It makes you sad and angry at the same time, he said. I worked hard to pay for their schooling because I grew up poor and couldn't afford to go to college. Sure. I wanted them to have what I didn't have. To be cut off without explanation is very tough. It's even worth for Beth, who is a great mother and who would always be there for them. I think this generation of kids is being poisoned by what they're being taught in school. <laughs> Yang is sympathetic to both parents and children who became estranged over what is taught in school and seen on the internet. Children aren't stupid, and they recognize there is injustice in the world, Yang said. And of course, kids don't want people to suffer, and they want to help. So the people behind this new ideology hook them with that, and that's how they get to them. <laughs> they hook them by appealing to their innate sense of like right and wrong and you know, wanting yeah. to help people. <laughs> hey, the first dose of compassion is free, and then you're hooked. <laughs> and you'll be buying empathy on street corners. You'll be selling your body. I, I love to feel justice. <laughs> it's like so funny to be like, um, yeah, my kids are being so unreasonable by not talking to me. And um, when I contacted the kids for the New York Post to talk to them about this article that I'm interviewing their mom for um, about how they suck, <laughs> they said no comment. Well, I mean, it shows that like the kids still have some residual love and affection for their parents just by saying no comment and other being not instead of giving a full dossier to the Post about how fucking unbearable their parents are. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, just to finish out the article, it says they, they hook them with this, and that's how they get to them. <laughs> Once they get you in, they can get you to do anything. They subvert the will of the self and replace it with the will of the group. Most kids don't realize they've been made part of a group, and they've been activated. Oh, my God. <laughs> Gender man activated. <laughs> <laughs> Activate. <laughs> Turning into a Power Ranger. Like, I'm just imagining, like, <laughs> like joining Little League and then just being, like, a deep programmer, being like, no, don't stop. You're being made part of a group. <laughs> they put you in the same outfit. They make you follow rules. <laughs> they, they promise the offer of winning. <laughs> but then they can get you to do anything. Oh, you're joining a gym to improve yourself? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I know a few other people who go to that gym and do the same exercises. <laughs> so, yeah, really there, makes you know, that's, think. that's how parents are dealing with the uh, woke mind virus today. But, uh, Ben, would you like to just like take a chance to like audition? Like, how, how would you deal with these, these snot nosed kids not coming to Thanksgiving, yelling at you about what the incorrect Starbucks cup and about how Columbus Day celebrates genocide? How would you straighten these, these brats out? Ben, I, let's say my parents hire you to detransition me. How would you talk? <laughs> <to me? laughs> I'm not. I'm not taking that. Bit. I'm not, not going to get in a fight about that. My, I, truly, I think the one thing, like you, just you do reverse psychology. You just have the parents start being the woke ones. And the yes, yes, yes. You have mm -hmm. the mom start talking about how Columbus was also transphobic or something. You know, and then it's yeah. done for. The kids will lay off. That's how I would do it. No, yeah, that it's, would work. I, I would like. show up yeah, until this woman like you've got to dye your hair blue. You know, you've got to do all of that. You got to get the biggest. Like you know, like because think back to when you were a kid. Like, what would be the worst thing imaginable? Like, if your parents got really into the same music you like, you know, and my dad would be like, "Yeah, hey son, yeah. Uh, that Nine Inch Nails, uh, pretty wild <laughs> stuff there. He wants to yeah. do what like an animal? Could, Come on, we, we love tell, it. We could tell this woman that she needs to transition. Like, if you want your kids <laughs> to not be gay. <laughs> You have to go on T. I'm going to need you to do tea. a little bit, some little operations here just to save your children that you, you love so much. Uh, <laughs> you they to, find out you've been on the Bernie payroll after they've been on T yeah. for six months. And they just like, <laughs> it's like the Kaiser Soze moment. <laughs> Usual suspects. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, Hess, I think, I mean, on, on a show that, uh, you know, I'm a co host of, I think you've set the record for most movie references in about, you know, an hour Damn. and a half Joppo episode. I can't so. believe it. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> they, were all, they were all fire. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. All right. I think we should uh, wrap it up there for today. But uh, Ben and Hessa, always a joy. If people would like uh, more so much. Ben and Hessa and Seeking Derangements in their life, uh, what should they do? You can find Seeking Derangements everywhere podcasts are. Um, and that doesn't include Patreon. 
And you can find our other call-in show on the app Call-In, which is call-in only. We are the fourth most popular show behind three transphobic call-in shows. So. <laughs> it's not your duty. <laughs> We're really only a duty. Duty. That app, yo. You got to fight the deep programmers. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to get programmed, please call in. Yeah. Call in the show. <laughs> Thanks for having us, guys. Yeah, thank you. Our oh, pleasure. Enjoy. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Chris, do we have any more uh, plugs for on our end? I have a ton of plugs. I have so many that I'm just going to record them in post. And here I am in post. All right. Hell on Earth premieres this Wednesday. Yes, the first step of Matt and Mai's new history miniseries on the 30 Years War and the Violent Birth of Capitalism will be in your free feed this Wednesday morning. All subsequent episodes will be for subscribers only over on our Patreon feed. That's patreon.com slash Chapo Trap House. Uh, we also have a special site with an interactive atlas over on hellonearth.chapotraphouse.com. So go check that out. And tickets are still available for our Hell on Earth launch party on Friday, January 20th at Littlefield here in New York City. Uh, that will be a live recording of a special Hell on Earth bonus ep plus an audience Q&A with me, Matt, Will, and friend of the show, Matt Carp. Ticket links to that are in the show description. I will also take producer's privilege and plug another personal event. Me and my wife, Molly, who some of you probably know from our music podcast and introducing, are hosting a party at Elsewhere here in Brooklyn on Wednesday, January 18th. We'll be DJing some tunes along with some of our good friends from 8 p.m. to midnight. Should be a fun time, drinks, dancing, etc. Uh, that's free with RSVP on Elsewhere's site. I'll put that link in the description as well. So if you're in Bushwick and looking for something to do on a Wednesday night, uh, come through and maybe they'll let us do it again on a weekend sometime in the future. Finally, the Talking Simpsons crew has added a second show to their San Francisco Sketchfest shows that Matt's going to be a part of. Uh, so that's Matt and the Talking Simpsons guys. They're going to be talking about Simpsons Predicted It at uh, San Francisco Sketchfest. The second show is 10 p.m. Wednesday, January 25th. Link to that also in bio. Those are the plugs. Thanks, guys. Listen to Hell on Earth this Wednesday. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Well, that, that does it for us. <laughs>